What's up everybody? My name is Will and welcome to another episode of Will on a Whim Natural Hair Edition. Today we'll be learning a thing or two about the structure of our natural hair, but first, like always, go ahead and click that subscribe button for weekly videos on how to take care of your natural hair. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. Okay. I'll do it for the fam. I'm taking y'all back to school. But Will, we don't wanna go back to school. Eh. Well, what would Beyonce do? Okay then. Now for many of us, natural hair is a new thing. Hair care can be overwhelming, so it's important not to make like Corbin Blue okay and jump in right into it. So today we'll be learning the basic structure of our natural hair and what this means for the way we take care of it. This is a follicle. Humans have about 100,000 of these per square inch on their body on average. And an average scalp has around 120 square inches. So carry the one, that's 12 million follicles all on the dome. Each one looks roughly similar to this. Now, there's a lot of things going on, but there's a couple of things that are important to know, like this. This is called the germinal matrix, also known as the hair root. You can think of this as the root of a plant. Just as a plant's root grows the stem of a plant, your hair root grows the stem of your hair, also known as the hair shaft. Get it? Got it? Good. So now that we understand that within a hair follicle lies a hair root that grows a hair shaft, we can move on to some other cool things, like this. Here's a blood vessel, which lies at the base of the follicle. A blood vessel helps your body get nutrients to different parts of your body. The same way in which this vessel gets containers of stuff, I don't know, to different parts of the world. Now, for a plant, a root gets its nutrients from the soil it's in. And you guessed it, the hair root gets its nutrients from the blood vessel that lies at the base of the follicle. All right, so this next part, you need to write down, okay? So you need to get a pencil and paper and jot this down, okay? Because this is really important. As you might know, nutrients enter your bloodstream because of the food that you eat. Your body sucks up all the nutrients after your food is broken down. So in order for your hair to thrive, okay, you have to deliberately put food in your body that nurtures hair growth. For example, carrots, cantaloupe, yams, and even sweet potatoes are very rich in beta carotene aka our hair's first love so get you some beta carotene moving on this is what you call a sebaceous gland okay a sebaceous gland secretes what we call sebum but if you live around the way okay you might just call it natural hair oil this is what keeps your hair all oilated okay all lubricated all shiny Ooh, fun fact which turns out to not be fun at all really. You ever wonder why straight hair gets so oily so fast? Or why people with straight hair always start sucking up all the air, all astonished at the fact that you with your natural hair only wash your hair once a week? Well, it all has to do with your curl pattern. Your sebaceous gland is always secreting sebum. For straight hair, it's pretty easy for this natural oil to reach the end of the hair shaft, lubricating the entire hair strand, which is why straight hair serves you BP oil spill, okay, after just a couple of days. Now, for curly hair, it takes a bit longer for that natural oil to reach the end of the hair strand, and that's because, well, look at it this way. It's easier to drive down a straight road than it is to drive down a road that's serving you And that's why it's essential to maintain the natural oils in your hair. Because once you strip your hair of those natural oils, it'll take a while for that hair to be fully lubricated once again. All right, next up, the hair cuticle. Your hair cuticle is made up of around six to 11 layers of this semi-transparent stuff called keratin. And just like my homeboy rainbow fish, okay, these scales can lay open or flat. Whether they're open or flat depends on temperature. For example, if you were in a hot sauna, okay, with hot steam, okay, and all that, your hair cuticle would lay open. But if your boy stepped into a freezer, those hair cuticles would lay closed. This is really important for the way you're moisturizing your hair. When your hair cuticle is open, you're allowing for water, sebum, and any other oils and potions and creams and lotions and puddings to penetrate your hair shaft. This is why you see people like Natro85, for example, deep condition slash wash their hair, moisturize their hair with warm water. And then when they're finished, they shock their cuticle closed with a cold rinse so that those nutrients get trapped in the hair shaft. Wow, we learned a lot today. Now, if you really didn't understand something, it's okay, it's all good in the neighborhood because you can just watch this video again and bam, round two, second chance to understand it. So in a sense, I really didn't take you guys back to school because this is actually just a video. But really, it's uber important important to understand how to take care of your natural hair. All right, so takeaway points. Your diet is important, whether you think it is or not. Eat well, live well, and give your hair what it needs. We talked about beta carotene, carrots, cantaloupe, sweet potatoes. What more could you ask for? Those are all really good things. Eat it, unless you're like allergic or something, then 
don't. Don't strip your hair of its natural oil. Remember the fact that your hair is not straight, which is totally fine. Your hair's natural oils take longer to reach the end of your hair shaft. So you gonna go a long time looking like a desert, okay, if you strip your hair of its natural oils. Make sure to use your knowledge of the structure of your hair cuticle to maximize the effectiveness of your moisturizing routine. Moisturize when your hair cuticle is open and then shock it closed with cold water. And last but not least, um, stay lit, like, lit nation, like, Liddy, like on fire, like lit. All right, everybody, so that brings us to the end of another episode of Will on a Whim Natural Hair Edition. Make sure to give this video a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you found it helpful. And also to let me know that there are actual human beings watching this, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can get these weekly videos on how to take care of your natural hair. I'll see all of you back here on next Tuesday, but until then, bye.